Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. For this week's video, I'm continuing my series on archaeological discoveries that change the world. We're traveling to Peru to explore the magnificent site of Machu Picchu. This city, built high in the Andes Mountains, was one of the keys to unlocking the Incan civilization. So to learn more, keep on watching. Before we get started at Machu Picchu, I think it's important we have a brief discussion of who the Incan people were. The Inca were a fairly short-lived empire from around the early 15th century until the Spanish conquest, read genocidal efforts, in the early 16th century. The last Incan city, Villa Cambaba, was finally overrun in 1572. Stretching from modern-day Argentina to southern Colombia, the Inca called their empire Tehuantinsuyo, or the Land of Four Corners. Their empire was divided into four districts, which all intersected in the capital city of Cusco. At its peak, the Incan Empire was home to around 12 million people. Fascinatingly, they were able to do this without the use of a wheel or draft animals. One of the main reasons for this was the Emperor Pachacuti Inca Yupanqui, who reigned from 1438 to 71, preferred expansion via diplomacy versus conquest. Although the Inca passed their history and religion through oral storytelling, some of it was preserved because the Spanish wrote them down. The Incan religion was polytheistic, meaning they worshipped many gods. Some of the most popular gods were the creator god Vera Cochu, the sun god Inti, the thunder god Ilapa, and the earth mother goddess Pachamama. Like many empires around the world, regional deities were also worshipped. In the Incan creation myth, they were created by the sun god Inti, who sent his son Manco Capac to earth. Manco Capac killed his brothers and led his sisters to the area near Cusco where they settled. One of the most alarming, to modern audiences, aspect of the Incan religion is that they practiced ritual human sacrifice. Children and teenagers were the most common sacrifices because they were most appealing to the gods. Archaeologists have found numerous examples in the mountains who were mummified after being left exposed to the elements. The most valuable form of art to the Incan people were textiles. Yarn was spun from alpaca and llama hair and then was used to create a variety of objects. Aklas, or chosen women, were tasked with creating objects, mainly tunics and shawls. They were elaborately patterned and served many purposes. The textiles denoted status, were given as honorific gifts, and even burned as sacrifices to the gods. Less common were gold and silver works of art. Inca represented animals, plants, and humans. Animals and plants looked fairly naturalistic, but the human figures were more abstract. They were typically dressed in miniature textiles and left as sacrifices to the gods in the mountains. The Spanish were astounded that the Inca valued textiles more than gold and silver. But that didn't stop them from melting down much of what they found, though, destroying cultural artifacts forever. 1527, Spanish forces invaded the Incan Empire. Chronicles stated that the cities were much better built and organized than their counterparts of the same size in Europe. However, despite this semblance of respect, the Spanish were determined to eradicate and conquer the land for their own. Although they brought many weapons and soldiers, the biggest threat to the Inca was actually smallpox. This disease isn't native to South America, and there was no immunity built up to it by the people. It wiped out a vast majority of the population. Thankfully, elements of this incredible civilization still survive. Through art and architecture, we are able to catch a glimpse into the past. In addition, today, Quechua, the language of the Incas, is still spoken throughout Peru and the other parts of the former Incan Empire. All right, now that we've got that background information out of the way, let's take a look at the incredible site of Machu Picchu. This architectural marvel is high in the Andes Mountains and about 80 miles away from Cusco, the capital of the former Incan Empire. There are many theories about why the site was built, but none have been proven beyond the shadow of a doubt. The most prevalent theory is that it was built as an estate for the Emperor Pachacuti. Machu Picchu is divided into an upper section for the noble class and priest, and a lower section for everyone else. Stone terraces were built into the mountains. In fact, about 60% of the structures are built underground as foundation, and they contained residential spaces, a palace, religious spaces, agricultural areas, and astronomical observatories. All of the areas are connected by roads. Archaeologists have estimated that it took the Inca about 50 years to build Machu Picchu. It is a remarkable feat of engineering, especially since they didn't have the use of large draft animals. For example, the Inca created an elaborate water system that not only helped store drinking water for the around 1,000 residents, but it also helped to distribute it into the ground to prevent flooding. In addition, Machu Picchu was built between two fault lines. In order to prevent collapse against earthquakes, they constructed the buildings so that the stone would shift and then be able to settle back into place. There are three especially famous parts of Machu Picchu. The Intihana is a large astronomical clock. The Temple of the Sun is the most sacred temple that only priests were allowed to enter into. And the Room of the Three Windows is another temple where each window represents a different part of the universe. 
These parts of Machu Picchu were especially helpful in aiding our understanding of the site. Before I explain how the site was rediscovered, I think it's important to mention that Machu Picchu was never truly the lost city of the Inca. Locals had known about it for generations. In fact, three farmers were using the terraces to grow their crops. However, the Spanish hadn't discovered it during their conquest, so it remained hidden to the west. There is some evidence that German explorers found the site a few decades before, but they didn't publish their findings. In 1911, Yale professor and amateur archaeologist Hiram Bingham traveled to Peru to look for the lost Incan capital. A local villager, a young boy, took him to Machu Picchu. He wrote the first time he saw the site that it fairly took my breath away. What could this place be? The next year, Bingham organized a second expedition with the help of Yale and the local Peruvian government. He hired local labor to clear the overgrowth so that he could study his stone ruins. Bingham and his team conducted numerous scientific and archaeological tests to try and understand the site. However, there were many issues with this expedition. Bingham was highly problematic. First of all, none of his hypotheses were correct, which set studies back years. Secondly, he was accused of practicing exploitive labor against the local population. And finally, and most seriously, Bingham was caught smuggling Incan artifacts through Bolivia and then back up to the United States. Technically, the law was on his side at the time, but it is a point of contention between Peru and the U.S. today. In 1948, Hiram Bingham wrote a book on his expeditions called The Lost City of the Incas. As problematic as the expeditions were, this book helped bring the Incan culture to a wider audience and encourage later generations of archaeologists to study them. We aren't entirely sure what the purpose of Machu Picchu was, but it's nonetheless provided a wealth of knowledge about the Inca Empire. Around 1.2 million people visit the site each year. That's pretty impressive since it's so high up in the mountains. Machu Picchu was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 and is one of South America's most popular tourist destinations. In 2007, the site was voted one of the new Seven Wonders of the World, a title well deserved. Machu Picchu is an incredible site that helps us to understand the Inca Empire. It was nearly swallowed by the jungle, but now the world gets to enjoy it and its wealth of knowledge.